This feels a little formal. I just filmed a main channel video. It's the what's in my beach bag slash beach essentials one and I watch back the footage. I get so insecure right after I film something for my main channel when I watch back the footage and seeing what I have to work with because I just overanalyze myself thinking, oh, I should have said that. Why did I stutter on those words? Oh, I made a grammar mistake here. I'm just so hard on myself and because I'm still in the moment, I have the chance I know to go back and refilm it. And I'm trying to prevent that because I feel like the generic authenticity of how I speak about something the first time can never be replicated when I'm repeating myself the second time. It becomes a lot more scripted and I don't like that. And I just went on a rant before this because it's my vlog channel. Welcome to my vlog channel. Welcome to Diary of a High School Graduate number five. Yeah. My youth is yours, tripping on skies, sipping waterfalls My youth, my youth is yours, run away now and forever My youth, my youth is yours I am so happy with this series and I filmed almost all of the previous ones in one night over a month and a half ago so it's been a while but I'm super excited to jump back into this. If I remember correctly, which I do, we are right here. Monday, June 9th, 2014. Oh, this is a favorite one of mine. I remember this day. You're gonna like this because I know how easy it would be to forget these things, the small ones, the moments in my life that don't come with a save the date card or an RSVP number the moments that ultimately become memories not due to any proud milestone or momentum or monument or due to pictures or pre-planned intentions but due to the everlasting emotional effect in the moment how it makes you feel and why unfortunately these seem to drift away in my mind until forgotten when they are as simple and unplanned as they were almost seen as unimportant or uneventful even normal from the outside but i i savor them Soak up the bliss until I feel so grateful I could explode. I love my life. I'm where I'm meant to be. I feel whole and happy and me. This life is wonderful. Wow, look at how bright the sky is today. Isn't everything just absolutely fantastic? Those are the many overwhel overwhelming thoughts that enter my mind during those seconds of good moments. Memories that I catch myself both thinking and feeling and even worse, sometimes believing. I do not want to forget anything about this last week of my life. It was too great and exciting and new and eventful. I had too many experiences, many I'd love to live through over and over again. So much that I started catching myself today, reminiscing back to last week at this exact time and what I was doing, who I was back then, how I still belonged at Breck, how I was still a senior. And then in one huge swoop, the May program presentation, award ceremony, senior luncheon, rehearsal, commencement, senior all night top secret party, 12 grad parties, split by a wicked real party, waking up to eight more grad parties, followed by another one tonight only to have mine next. And that's sort of where I am right now. Still in this huge swoop, but thankfully it's the final stretch and summer will soon blossom. After the normal grad party, they had an actual party, one class of 2014 and older. We felt that it could very well be our grade's final, real, high school party, as a whole, a final celebration. I was super excited to be attending. Talk about a dry spell. Oh my god. <laughs> I showed up to Lydia's. Her bedroom, like Disney Channel, threw up on it. There were so many teenage girls getting ready to party. I enjoyed every second. I didn't get to experience that feeling of all these friends in your room. It felt nice. Hannah found it so amusing that I basically had on no clothes. I found it convenient and exciting. I was confidently going for easy and sleazy. <laughs> I think I nailed it. Oh, Michaela. I needed a hookup. Needed it. Selfishly, for my own taste, I used them. But I know I was being used too, so it didn't hurt, just for their horny drunk boy desires. But I am okay with that, for my vulnerable desire to feel like some someone sees something of value in me gives me value. I never remembered his name because when he told me I had just stumbled in and didn't realize I should have any reason to, but he just kept coming back. We just kept talking to one another. He kept getting closer and closer until I was against a wall, so loud by the music it shook, and his friend told me I needed to kiss him, and his nose touched mine, and I thought of the girl that sarcastically told me to be careful because he's going to rape me. 
I kept thinking of all these things and colors and lights and stars in my head. I didn't care that he was kissing me or touching me or lifting me off my feet. I do not know how, but we ended up outside alone against someone's car where we kept going and I began to feel numb. He called me a prude as we walked back because I stopped it. I do not know why I did. It just happened. Maybe I was worried or wanted to respect myself. I'm not sure. I had him. So much could have happened. He kissed me again inside, a quick peck, before he left with his friends. He probably doesn't remember my name either. That wasn't what I necessarily wanted to write about, or what I wished to remember. I guess seeing <laughs> take body shots off of oh my god, I forgot, off of <laughs> was truly a gem. A fulfilled wish of five years, they shared. Something we joked about all senior year finally came true. I never thought it would actually happen, but maybe graduation and goodbye makes even the most predictable people do surprising things. There is an outburst of emotional breakdowns, a new rush of energy telling us this is it. Or maybe we all just had no fucks left to give, no effort left to try, a real YOLO mindset instilled in all. After the crazy, perhaps greatest party, perfect way to end a year was over, and we were all drunk and satisfied, I found myself sitting on Lydia's bed, watching Madison lay all spread out on the floor, Sophia and Lydia role-playing as we tried to teach Sophia how to act when going for a hookup, and me laughing on the bed, wearing Sophia's lacy bra over my shirt. There was a moment, I believed once Sophia went to sleep on the couch and Peter and Patty finally quieted down, where Madison, Lydia, and I all snuggled real tight, spooning body to body to body in her cozy twin bed. I was by chance in the middle, and we all laid there breathing as one being. I believe Madison was actually asleep, and I remember thinking I wouldn't mind falling asleep at that moment, even in my jean shorts, crop tank, and contacts, because I felt so loved and so safe in there, my little cocoon of friends so close to me, nothing bad could happen. I knew how easy I could fall asleep and not wake up in the night or toss or turn. I guess I hold on to that moment of spooning with my best friends so much because years and years ago I saw a picture on Facebook of some popular girls doing it and I felt sad that I never had friends, never snuggled, so when it happened and I felt and just now remembering that picture, it, it makes sense. I never wanted to get up, move, end it. I love Madison and Lydia so dearly, and I will forever hold on to that early summer night in Lydia's bed after we all went to a party together. Gosh, I love my friends. This is how it's supposed to feel. I know that now because I have it and can feel it, but I can't put words to it. It's inexplainable. But I somehow simply knew this is what real friendships look like, and I am forever grateful. I remember all those middle school days walking alone, holding on to notes others passed in class just to pretend they were talking to me, to crying when I heard of plans I wasn't involved, and the time telling Ramsey I was hoping a new kid would come along, meant to be my best friend, and that's why I couldn't find any at the moment. Because I remember what the opposite of this feels like, I feel like I am able to value it so much more. I never imagined being comfortable and lucky enough to have a friend over, but here I am with Lydia, squealing over my bedroom, laying on my bed, wanting to scan my bookshelves, reading the goals I made sophomore year, the quotes I wrote down in her Christmas gift to me. Hell, if she asked, I'd let her read every page in this, too. We're such great friends. That's what it's like to have one. It's also carpooling to grad parties, listening to music and breaking out into full duets, complete with harmonizing and everything, because that's what Hannah and I did. The song Little Talks ended and she laughs, asking, did that really just happen? I'm still smiling. I loved it so much. I don't even think I'm that open to sing around and I call her my best friend. Maybe that tells you something. Maybe driving up to Leslie and Lasharo's grad party in Hannah's green Prius to screaming Katy Perry's teenage dream with Hannah and Lydia mean more than the tally of nights I spent at including this one. There are so many too, and it's like I never want to write about them for some reason, yet here I am so full of captivated emotions over a spooning session and a duet in the car that I must write about them because I'm so scared of forgetting about them and how I felt. That means something. Something special not meant to be forgotten. For though this insane week of events too big and life-changing to even process it, I think it's important to remember the little moments of time, the memories that won't make the resume or Facebook album, but are still just as important because they were serendipitous and wonderful to know no one could plan them, but when they do, it's hard to imagine a moment otherwise. 
for it was almost meant to be. They were so glorious. Seems like there's no need to worry about summer 2014. In bed or in the car, I'll be okay. Aww. That one made me so happy to read. I love that day. I stuck in this entry a bunch of photo booth photos that my best friends and I took during grad party season and at Urban Outfitters, hey. I hung these in my dorm my first year of college and now they're in this journal where I feel like they belong. That entry kind of made me sad because I talk about how close I am to these girls that I really wish I still, I'm still friends with a lot of them mentioned, but with some of them, I'm not and it makes me sad and I miss who we were back then and that time in my life. Oh my god! Okay, the next entry is my grad party. See, I told you it gets better. So make sure that you are subscribed and check in to the next Diary of a High School Grad, which will be up very shortly. Have a great night, everyone. Peace. I'm a noob. Whoa! This quality might be worse than my phone, but that doesn't matter. I am editing what you're watching right now, and I feel like I totally did not say what needed to be said at the end. Is this distracting? Are you still going to listen with, like, all of this love happening up here? Anyway... I was watching back my commentary at the end and I left out a lot of really important things. So listen up. I hope... <laughs> I thought I could do this. At the beginning of this entry, you may remember that I was very, very optimistic. Everything is wonderful. The grass is green. The sky is blue. Life is wonderful. I love my life. Friends are great. Everything is just wonderful. I mentioned it in... A earlier episode when I was contrasting how shitty life is on like on a very suicidal night to the next morning when life is wonderful and I introduce the concept of this pattern that I am starting to pick up on at this time in my life and I still pick up on it I'm so much better now at recognizing this pattern but back then I didn't even know it was a cycle and I didn't know what was happening I won't repeat everything that I discuss about this mood disorder bipolar shit that um, I didn't know about because I already did in a different episode and I hope that you watch that. But I will just state that here is another example. This is how my mind worked and how I just didn't even realize it yet. And it's just, it shows how extreme I feel emotions, both high and low ones. In this case, it was high, where somebody might say like, yeah, I had a great day. I went to a few grad parties. To me, it was, oh my god, this was the best day ever. Everything is so wonderful. I'm on such a high right now. Life is great. Like, why did I ever feel as bad as I did a week ago? So I'm just all up and down all over the freaking place. That was something I wanted to mention. And the second thing that I wanted to mention was, actually, that might have been it. Oh, I remembered the second thing. It had to do with that boy at that party, the whole calling me a prude for um, saying no, basically. I cannot believe this, but it used to be a goal for me in high school to make out with someone at a party that I didn't know. Like, if we were going to a party full of strangers, I, like, could not leave the party until I had succeeded this goal and, like, locked lips with somebody just so that I felt better about myself. Like, how fucked up is that? And so, at this party, it was no different. And so this party was no different, and I went in with the same mindset, and I found myself, I don't know what happened, maybe I gained finally some self-esteem or like self-value or what, but I like didn't want to make out with the stranger, and when I stopped it, he, I mean, you, you listen, he got so mad at me, and he was like, you know what, you're a fucking prude. That is a quote. And that changed everything. In that moment, I realized that I did not have self-respect, and I did not like that I put my entire essence and, like, esteem onto this guy that really doesn't give a, a crap about me and was using me. Yeah, I knew he was using me, but, like, I didn't like that he thought he could say that to me and that he thought he could call me a fucking prude to my face because I didn't want to have sex with him. That makes me a prude! I walked back into that party and I told myself, that's it. I'm done hooking up, making out, locking lips with strangers at a party. It wasn't like a cold turkey, I'm done type of like deal with myself, but I haven't since that. All through my, all through college, my first year of college and then the semester before I dropped out, I didn't hook up with anyone. I didn't lock lips. And it's college, so there were definitely opportunities, and if you choose to, go for it. It's your body. It is like your choice. But for me, I just couldn't do it because of how this one guy and what he said to me has affected me and has shaped my value and my worth and like made me question how I was treating myself. So I just wanted to say that 
it was a pretty pivotal moment for me, and I don't even think I realized at the time why, but it was the last time that I thought I needed somebody to need me to feel like I had worth. Yeah. That is absolutely all that I wanted to say now. I'm glad I got all those things off of my chest and that I'm almost done editing this so you can watch it. Did you enjoy? Please let me know. These videos get the least amount of comments and thumbs up, which make me wonder, do I keep doing them? Do you like them? I don't know. You have to tell me. I can't get over this. Okay, bye.